Hi everyone, a oh, handsome boy and pretty girls. Oh, thanks, thanks, Clarence. <laughs> very, very encouraging. Now, uh, before I go into the whole entire topic, just make sure you guys got no books because uh, yesterday I had a chance to talk to Valerie and Sanhi and I've learned so much from them talking about the trends in 2021. Uh, but before I begin, maybe just to actually warm us up so that you can have more questions coming in, can you guys type in the chat group which social media do you guys think was the biggest, was the fastest growing in 2020? Now, uh, let me just redefine the question so that it's very specific. Which social media was the fastest growing in 2020 in terms of number one, percentage growth? Number two, absolute growth. So absolute growth means the total number. Uh, percentage growth means in terms of, uh, well, percent. So if you think example, so you've got to type down two social media platforms that you think has been the fastest. The first one in terms of percentage, the second one in terms of absolute. So, so uh, let's give us some response from the chat. We'll be looking through the chat. For example, if you think it's Friendster and uh, ICQ, then you type Friendster slash ICQ. Okay, great, great, great. I see TikTok, Telegram, Instagram, Telegram and Signal. Oh, okay. Uh, we're talking about 2020. That's where we will invite our two experts to talk about 2021. Okay, and hey, where are the rest of you guys? So just type in, type in. Okay, so Zoom. Oh, okay. So social media network, let me show you guys. The result is this. Absolute growth. In fact, it is still, it is still, I mean, uh, I don't know whether it's a shock to you guys. Huh? It is actually still Facebook. It is still Facebook in terms of absolute growth. And in terms of percentage, highest Highest gain in terms of percentage, it is this particular uh, uh, app called Toing or TikTok. How many of you guys actually use TikTok or Toing? If you have, you can type T to let us know that you have been using this. Now, uh, back, to, back to our panel. Uh, again, I, I'm very excited to learn from Valerie and also uh, 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 Shanti. So maybe I'll just start by asking some interesting questions regarding integrating both traditional and also online. I'll pass this question to Valerie first because her background is extremely interesting. She works in the biggest like shoe retail shop uh, in, in Singapore, in, actually in, in the whole entire world, like Nike, Royal Sporting House. And now she transited to online services. So from traditional products to online services. Can you tell us a little bit about the trend and also tell us how does the integration looks like? Has there been any change in terms of marketing principles and, and what do you see? Yeah, um, so when the change of retail in going to the more of online uh, things, actually the concept is still the same. The four Ps, the seven Ps are still the same. It's just the platform has changed and mm -hmm. also the, the skills. Because last time was more offline, you do papers, the train, the radio, and all this is very traditional. You can't really measure it. You can mm -hmm. see the things, say eyeballs and all that, but it's a, just an estimation and, and just a, a, a guesstimation from uh, all the, the media channels. But when you go online, everything you do, whether Facebook, TikTok, and all that, uh, the results are instant. And then you can see the result, whether people are, are instantly um, uh, um, having some interaction with what you, what, you, what you have posted and so on. And then you also can manage the budget. You don't have to put all whole budget, but you can manage it. So in a sense, um, it's faster, and the results is also more targeted, more uh, um, you can come back with it. The results faster and then you can manage in terms of that yeah thanks, thanks so, for so it's more exciting uh, i would say yeah more, more exciting uh. okay okay uh, exciting may be good may, may not be good so <laughs> we can yeah. discuss a bit about that uh. and also uh, feel free to continue to ask questions for example valerie is talking about measuring matrix you can track certain things so i, I don't know what about what about those uh, who are online right now maybe also let us understand where you are from uh, are you currently running a business are you doing online commerce let us also know which country you are from so that we can answer your questions better. And of course, please also tell us what matrix you're actually measuring. So take uh, uh, about a 10 to 20 seconds. Tell us where, where you are from, like which country and what you are doing right now. Obviously, you are here to actually not just look at uh, pretty faces, but also to learn some uh, pretty techniques, correct? So, so Valerie uh, is talking about there's no much difference in terms of principles. Now, uh, maybe I pose this question to Sanji as well. So Sanji, um, maybe I ask you a very important question. So, Kim San Hee, are you from Korea? Actually, yes, I'm from yet. Korea. <laughs> North, North Korea or South Korea? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm totally kidding, guys. Sorry. Uh, I, obviously, I do not value my job as the moderator a lot. So, likely, I won't be, I won't be like, uh, invited back. So, I'm going to ask all the questions I can. Now, uh, San Hee, because in 2020, uh, due to COVID, that's where I think you have mentioned that you help many business 
digitalize, bring them onto the online world. So can you share with us a little bit about that and what happened last year? So in 2020, we saw a lot of um, both small SMEs, medium-sized enterprises, as well as the large players in the game. All of them were kind of forced to digitalize. And on the consumer side as well, that we saw one of the fastest rate of adoption for online shopping. So um, for some of our clients, um, or I could just give a, a huge example. A lot of the budget was shifted from traditional where they would put it into maybe like billboards because at that period of time, maybe circuit breaker, people could not go out. So they had to change and put the budget online. Oh, is she, is she lagging? She's lagging right now, not me, right? Yeah, she's lagging. Okay, okay, well, well, well she's coming back, right? Oh, she's from, uh... so, so, okay. So uh, Sanyu was actually talking about really bringing businesses online. Yesterday, she shared many interesting stories. We will let her come back online as well. So online can be a, can be certain issues and struggle as well. So uh, while, while Sunny is coming back uh, with her frozen screen, we will go back to Valerie. Okay, Valerie, can you also share with us, right? You know, you mentioned that actually a lot of the, I would say matrix can be like easily tracked and also the budget is smaller. Now compared to traditional and compared to online, right? What is the difference between in terms of budget? Like last time we talk about traditional in terms of royal sporting house. What are the traditional methods that you have been using, and 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 are people still using it? Are businesses still still using it? Yeah. So the time I was doing from retail, so fashion, so fashion, uh, it's a lot of PR, media, so you can engage media and also add advertising in the new uh, magazines. Right. So all these magazines are quite expensive. Like one one times is like few thousand dollars, uh, maybe four four or five thousand dollars one mm. time and it's only one time one month and then it's like a certain eyeballs and, and all that so it's fixed while with online you can achieve more targeted uh, mm. in the uh, segment your target and who you want to target so instead of like uh, putting everything out there and all that so you don't need to find, spend five thousand dollars you can spend a few hundred dollars and automatically you can adjust your budget and so on so mm. so the budget has definitely come down in a sense and more targeted so that then you are spending wisely in terms of the budget. Okay, thanks, thanks, Valerie. Uh, and 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 as Sunny is in back again, yeah, maybe I also got <laughs> a question. So so we did mention that uh, like you said that you don't have to like spend five thousand immediately. You can go in phases. How would you actually budget? Let's say a certain campaign. Do you test out certain like marketing ads and things like that? Uh, and and each time, how do you actually manage them? Maybe maybe I can get some insights from you guys as well. And at the same time, uh, friends here, do feel free to ask questions. We, yeah, so Lauren is from Malaysia, PR Entertainment, and Clarence is from Singapore, and the rest of you uh, did not type anything, so I'm assuming that you are here just to look at the pretty faces. No, come on, so you can ask some questions, okay, guys? So so maybe I pass this to Sanji, like when you actually help your customers run a marketing campaign, usually yeah. what are the first few steps that you actually go through? Uh, well, okay, one of the most important strategies that we use whenever we run any advertising campaign, and this is what we advise all our clients to do is practice something we call a b testing so i think if everyone is in the marketing industry it's something that they will be familiar with mm. so the good thing is you can always test different elements to see which type of ad um resonates better or leads to a better conversion rate with your target audience right. so in terms of a b testing you would test um maybe for ad number one you could change the type of image you want to compare between a static image versus a video which ad would perform better and then if you find that okay like my video is driving way more conversions then definitely um in the next phase you would shift some of your budget to the video ad rather than you know just putting a 50 50 split so in this way we're able to continuously optimize um any ad campaigns that we're running which is i think one of the biggest beauties of um, digital advertising because this is not something that you can do when you run like a traditional ad where once you have your key visual your creative is locked and set so um, definitely I would think all of our audience participants if you're running ad campaigns always make sure that you're running at least two different types of ads at, at any one point of time just to see which one performs better mm. and then um, 
you can in the next round you could tweak maybe um, the text that you're using or even your audience. One could be geo-targeted. Maybe you want to target a certain group um, specifically within Singapore, like one mile radius around your retail presence. Um, the other one could be just targeted towards the entire of Singapore. So in that way, you know, there's really an infinite number of ways that you could do A/B testing just to make sure every dollar that you're spending is continuously being optimized to generate best return on your investment. Wow, so, so we will discuss a little bit more about that and I will get a very uh, insight as well. So in the meantime, in, in case you guys do not know what questions to ask Sanji and uh, Valerie, right? Let me just give you some insights about uh, Sanji as well. So from she's from Second, Seconds Media, she's the co-founder. So what they do is, right, they have a core focus in Chinese digital marketing. We do know that the Chinese market is a huge market. So she do not just help customers look into expanding to China, but also Chinese speaking audience. Meaning to say, she has insights on marketing platform like WeChat content marketing, WeChat advertising, uh, even like things like uh, uh, Douyin or, or we know it as TikTok, Baidu marketing. So feel free to ask all this. Personally, I've got plenty, plenty of questions and uh, like what is a Korean doing uh, in, in China? But, but no. So, so anyway, uh, back to Valerie. So what, what about you? How do you actually plan your marketing campaign? Actually, uh, what um, uh, Sanhi was talking about, that's also what we do internally. She's doing from the, 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 the agency side, I'm doing internally also. Let's say if I'm going to plan it, whether I'm doing myself or through an agent. So you have to ten, think about what's the objective of what you're doing. So what are the way you want to test? Also segmentating the target is also very important. The other one is leveraging on your own customer base. Because in, let's say, for example, Facebook, you can go inside use your own database and put inside and get similar audience and, and target them. So then that's easier to, to get people of the same interest into your products or so, because that's one very key area for, let's say, Facebook marketing. So then, um, yeah, the database, then you can mine from there, from your learnings, from all these, uh, these online marketing. Because that's why, that's the beauty, I would say, that, that's why I say exciting, because that's the beauty, you can learn from there and from each of this campaign, you can leverage on it and learn again and again after that. So then you get better and better in terms of that. So that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So offline. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry for cutting you again. Okay. So, okay. so uh, again, now uh, you can hear from both uh, Valerie and Sanchi is about a lot about testing, learning, a lot about A B testing. So if you do not do A B testing, then you are A B normal. You are abnormal as a marketer. <laughs> so very important to actually do that. Now, uh, based on your testings, uh, especially on social media, from online uh, platforms, currently, which is the most effective platform in your opinion? And also, we can talk about moving forward, what do you foresee the trend to be? What is the most effective platform uh, in your opinion, Valerie? Um, I, there's, I think it depends because it depends on uh, where's your target and so on. Mm -hmm. Like For example, I was from the retail. Retail, I would say mostly it was done actually on Facebook and Instagram. Right. But for insurance, um, it's a long tail kind of thing. So maybe Facebook is not for targeting of sales, but it's more of building the brand awareness. You know, that mm. Maybe you want to target in terms of uh, um, the business, it's more through LinkedIn possible because you want to target on all the, the more of the higher end customers. You know, that. So it depends on your product itself and which platform will you book for your product. So there's not one size fit all in uh, how, how, what's your objective? You want to do brand awareness or you want to do drive conversion rate and how you're going to get that that, that database to go and go into a target for your campaign so there's a lot of a uh, few factors uh, to think about it yeah and, and as i say as you said earlier tiktok was it's a very happening platform and people are on it right so not necessarily you have to be on it it, it depends uh, what campaigns what the, the product that you run and how you're going to manage it is it one off campaign or is it the wrong term kind of building of your brand on the platform. So these are kind of things that you have to think about. Lah. Yes, yes. So, so, so thanks, Valerie. So uh, again, it, it depends on your market segment, your customers. And of course, uh, probably when we first start out, we want to actually focus on one or two platform and we uh, add on to the platform. Uh, what about, what about Sanji? Based on your experience, it, it, especially last year, when you helped many businesses digitalize, go online, which will be the first few platform that you were uh, actually leverage on to help them? I think in... Singapore, um, while TikTok grew really quickly, a mm. lot of the, the content, and, and there are brands that have um, embarked on marketing campaigns on TikTok, um, but in terms that it, it's still difficult to track very um, concrete 
conversions at this stage. But I think we can expect very exciting things from TikTok probably 2021. In 2020, I think Instagram and Facebook were still the top platforms for our clients. And um, what the question that you asked was which uh, social media platform would be the most important. But I actually um, have a slightly different uh, framework or, or the way of thinking, which is um, depending on the brand or who their target audience is, as well as the metrics that they're targeting, um, they shouldn't just focus on one platform because social media platforms could be, the response rate could change. Facebook could be really popular one day and then there's something, piece of news that comes out saying you're... Oops, is she being banned because like she's saying something <laughs> bad about Facebook, is it? <laughs> okay, by the way, those all, uh, all, all the audiences, maybe you can also comment which platform privacy has been is being invaded. And then you could end social media platforms that um, would contain your target audience. Uh, would, probably, yeah. So certain portions of your sharing was censored just now because <laughs> there was a bit of hang. <laughs> but but uh, so, so you were saying actually it depends on the platform. Oh, no. Yeah. But it's okay. Your your screen freeze is always very good looking. So so don't worry about that. So so for the auditors, uh, which, which platforms have you been using? Uh, and also may, maybe one thing about Facebook. I I don't know. What do you all think? Because one one current hot topic is this. Many people are saying that they're going to boycott Facebook. I mean, it's not the first time, right? But they're going to boycott Facebook. They're going to delete uh, uh, uh what what else? Uh, delete Instagram. Use Telegram. Uh, what what, what uh, mm. de no, delete WhatsApp? Use Instagram and stuff like that. So what, what do you think? Will, will that actually be happening? And, and for the audiences, what do you think? If you all think that it will happen or there's a, that, or Facebook will be at risk from a scale of maybe one to 10, how risky is this for Facebook? Especially for those who are leveraging a lot of Facebook. So uh, you can type if 10 means very risky, if one is like, you don't think that it's going to happen. So let's get some response from the audiences. One is going to blow over. Okay, any, any, any concerns and factors we need to look out for when doing localized marketing contents as not to offend the local communities. Oh, this is an excellent question. We, we can come to that as well. So uh, I, will, I will park that question after uh, both of our panelists mentioned. What, what do you think? Will Facebook disappear the next five, 10 years? Uh, Sunny? Uh, Facebook might, we can't tell for sure, but it will definitely change because what's happening now is Facebook used to be able to access a lot of our data. So maybe like our age, where we work, all of that. But nowadays, your target audience is way more informed and they're deciding not to allow Facebook to have access to this information, mm. which is actually the core component of how Facebook operates as a business because they sell this information to advertisers, right? Right. So uh, moving okay. forward, if your consumers are not willing to give them that information, then we'll have to see how Facebook innovates or changes, you know, how they want to the, have users on the platform or how to retain their users on their platform. And, and yesterday you were sharing with us, uh, just to dive in a bit deeper, you were sharing with us, like even for Instagram, where, where younger people like myself, <laughs> no, not really, okay, where younger people actually use Instagram, they do have a, a couple of different profiles to mask their identity. Is, is, that, is that correct? Uh, they have different profiles to segment different personalities that they would like to show. So maybe your main Instagram account, um, people use it for, you know, it, they know if you apply for a job or if anyone wants to stalk you online, that is the profile that they're going to look for. So obviously, pe people are so smart these days that they just make sure whatever content that is available online to be found is very curated. So that's the main account, but they could also have two to three other different accounts just to showcase different, I mean, you know, hobbies. If they really like photography, they could have an Instagram account just focused on that, or they could have another Instagram account to follow brands and personalities that they really like, but they don't want to necessarily show that on the main account. Right. So this is a phenomenon that we've observed across um, the, the kind of in their, people in their 20s and even the younger generation, um, those in their teens, they have multiple Instagram accounts, I see. Uh, which I think for marketers is a very interesting insight as to consumer behavior. Right. And, and how many Instagram accounts do you have? I actually have five. <laughs> okay. Wow. And, and, and Valerie, how many do you have? You better say more than five. Otherwise, you're just <laughs> open. The, the, the lesser you have, the older you are. <laughs> <I really like. laughs> 
I think I, I would have mine and the, the brands that I run also. So that's that's quite a lot already. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I only got one now. So uh, that, that exposes my age. Uh, but what do you think, uh, Valerie? Do you think that the whole Facebook saga is going to blow over? Uh, is Facebook going to be here to stay? I think I think uh, Shanti mentioned some very interesting facts. Because if they can't draw data from you, in fact, they are less effective as a marketing platform. But what, what do you think? I think they would, as uh, Sanji said, they would just change. They would just modify and and, and change how, how they do things and all that. They are actually too big to, to, to fall and so on. Too big and so on. So I think they will continue to go on. So, I mean, they've grown. They added Instagram. They added WhatsApp into to their, their portfolio. So as they grow bigger, they I'm sure they will add uh, some other um, apps or tools or whatever into their own portfolio. So they are too big to what. And I think they're very smart. They will, they will always modify. As you know, like the, over the year and so on, people, a lot of people shop, right, on, on, online. So they also uh, implement something like a shopping uh, thing Facebook, yeah. on the Facebook. Yeah, so to help small and medium companies to do um, their online selling and all that. So they have been modifying their platform and all that. So they, they are one, they're really one step ahead or, or more than that. Mm -hmm. You're right, you're right. So, uh, okay, maybe I also want to ask, uh, answer some questions from uh, Andrew. He's asking, like, any concerns and factors we need to look out for when doing local localization marketing? Uh, and uh, the idea is not to not to offend the local community because social media is very loud, right? So, so uh, sometimes, like, negative comments, how do we deal with it? And uh, very, what are your opinions? Because because you're doing in the, like, like the insurance line, do you, yeah. do you face, like, negative comments? Do you get like marketing uh, campaigns that was like slammed down. Do you have any experience in that and how do you deal with it? Um, yeah, because I'm in the insurance lines before, so that's quite sensitive. So before we go out and anything, so we always have the legal and compliance to, to, to care about. Uh. So that, that would not have happened. Uh. But if we have some negative comments, we try to um, put it, uh, um, draw the, the comments out and also engage one but one to one uh, with all the negative comments in terms of that. Uh. Okay. So, and I to share like uh, last year because of the COVID, right? So um, it was a, a kind of downtime and all that. So we also uh, be more sensitive to reduce all the too much promotional kind of campaigns uh, during that uh, circuit breaker, that period. So to, to care about, I mean, uh, to have empathy to our right. customer that you don't, you know, just sell, sell, sell. But during that period, people are down, people are sick and so on. Because insurance is a protection, right? So we don't say, oh, yeah, you know, during this down period, you should, you know, get more protection and things like that. So we, we also have to um, think about the situation and all that and actually pull back some of our messages and all that, only come back much later in the year. So that's how we also kind of think about the situation and how to localize it uh, to the, the current situation. So, so it's about having empathy, uh, having relationship with customers and also in events, someone actually have negative comments on, on your page, you actually do, do reply them like immediately, like one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, okay. correct. Oh, how about you, Sanji? Have you have you like experienced negative comments, and how do you deal with it if you have? Or yeah, have we, not? on behalf of our clients, we something that they take very seriously for last year as well as I think for this year it will be something important. Uh, is social listening, mm. so you definitely have to look out for what your um customers as well as target audience is talking about you as a brand as well as what's going on in the general community. So I think for the question, it was asking how not to offend um, when you're doing local yep. marketing. So um, there are some sensitive topics at any point of time that are going on on social media. So whenever you release a campaign or a piece of content, it's really important to make sure that if it's talking about anything sensitive, which I think the locals would know maybe like in the context of Singapore, what are some um, topics that would generate a higher form, you know, that's sensitive. Uh, just check with um, different groups of people, get it vetted before you release that piece of content, just to ensure you have a different perspective, because we want to make sure you don't misrepresent or offend any group of people. So if that's not um, like it, it went out and unfortunately for you, let's say you incited some negative uh, feedback, it's very important for the brand to respond quickly and not hide away. Because I think in the past, brands could just stay silent and the whole issue would blow over. But nowadays you have your cancel culture, 
really anything could happen to your brand if you don't take responsibility. So we always advise, um, think about how you would like to position your statement or how you would like to reach out to the offended party. And it has to be settled. You can't just hide away. Okay. Yeah, and speed is also very important. So the first thing is definitely brands cannot hide anymore if there's anything negative. And secondly, um, they have to be fast about it because if you're not quick in responding, people think they start to have their own thoughts okay. and they, it starts to get louder and louder. So um, things get viral in 24 hours and we don't want that to happen. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, so uh, this is an uh, interesting question as well. So, okay, uh, Lauren actually mentioned a general idea is to remove the comments before it does more harm than good. So, what are your uh, thoughts about that? And 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 maybe uh, just to have some, I, I don't know, have some interaction, have some fun. The, the audience right. You can let us know what kind of like negative comments do you see online. You can just post it there, or you can you can you can type negative things about us right now, and we'll try to respond to you. So it's a it's a real life practice, and we see what happens. Uh, later I can share some 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 opinions as well. But I do notice that no matter how good a brand is, there will always be a small group of, uh, I would say, loud minority who goes around complaining as well. So do yeah. you think it's a, it's a good idea to remove the comment? Does it do more harm than good? Uh, uh, Valerie? No, we don't remove our comments. We just leave it there. It's just that um, uh, we try to take it offline to engage with the person who made the comment. Yeah. So do anything, yeah, yeah, correct. We don't, we don't remove the comment. But on the public... On, on, on the public page, do you actually show that there's a resolution? Otherwise, people feel that you're not like commenting? Yeah, we'll we try to show a resolution on, in terms of uh, what. People will say, oh yeah, we'll, usually there's a, a sentence that we will, um, yeah, we will private message you to get back to you on this matter. And then we'll take it offline. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and Sanji, do you, do you do that as well? Or do you, have you all removed any comments before? Uh, we... It's a case by case basis. So if it's a legitimate concern by the consumer, we definitely do not remove the comment because um, in doing so, actually the consumer does have the power to call the brand out saying, why did you remove my comment? And then it could start from Facebook, a small issue, but they realize you took their comment down. They could go on Instagram saying, hey, this brand did this and this. Oh, yes. Everyone look like do not support this brand. So that's definitely a risk that we can face. But in the case where it's um, offensive to the general community, it is uh, not appropriate. We would privately message the person and maybe ask them to delete the comment. Uh, but we really, really try not to delete anything that's um, posted by someone other than our own because it's, you, you have to, yeah. Understand. So, for example, if let's say Amos E come and uh, do some comment, then you'll remove it. Uh. Otherwise, well, uh, generally, we'll just try to actually answer that. Okay, thanks. Thanks for uh, answering all these questions. And feel free to continue to ask questions, uh, the audiences. So, Clarence has this question. Want to ask about how we can ensure our social media posts reach the most audience. Well, uh, this is a very, very big topic. Uh, that's why you must look for seconds media like, and also a battery <laughs> like, help you on that. Uh, but uh, well, I, I guess this is a common question. How, how do we get more rich? And I don't know whether you want to talk about the how, okay, any principles of virality. What would your thing? Are videos better? Are photos better? Which, which one works better? Valerie? Uh, um, okay. Uh, for me, when I did, I mostly do static or if not, uh, video. I realized the video has more engagement versus the static. Because mm. I, I think people have changed. Last time they are more static and looking at pictures, but people have changed to more video. And the video have really have to catch attention. So like uh, within eight seconds or, le or less, um, the, the video has between eight seconds or less uh, because that's the capturing attention of people. And then uh, like within the two seconds of video, you really have to catch uh, the person so that the person continue watching it and, and seeing. Yeah. So you have to be very creative in terms of catching the, the customer so, so the rule is two seconds the first two seconds yeah first two seconds catch what, how, what you're showing you in two seconds so like like i mean like for your insurance sector <laughs> what, what, what do you do in the first two seconds to, to catch their attention so the picture that we use the the thing that we we have and all that yeah and uh, maybe the caption or to go and draw the customer to see about it yeah so it's uh -huh. very important to do all this yeah so, so that's why i say it's a lot of trial and error testing it out that so each time you do and the more 
testing and better and better. But because there are so many permutation factors, the customer, the, the, the ad copy, the design and so on. So it's always a continuous uh, thing that you have to do in testing. Yeah, so, so probably, probably I'll also ask you guys to maybe if you can remember certain posts that there's more effective or even like a more viral and then we can discuss, discuss about some of the principles of it. Now, uh, uh, so, so Shanji, what, what, what do you do for the first two seconds? Or, or, or rather, what, what, do you, what do you have insights about uh, virality principles? Like what will make a post more effective or create more engagement uh, in, from your experience? Generally, we, uh, what Valerie mentioned, video is definitely king. It does drive more engagement. Um, some other techniques or strategies that we try to use will be to trend jack. Mm. So trend -jack. any... Yeah, any topics that are, you know, suddenly really popular on that day, we would um, try to. Oh, so, so about talking about the latest trend, right? Okay, so while she's uh, coming back, so we will actually, okay, how about Valerie? Maybe, maybe I'll just shift it over as she's returning back to online. Have you have any like a uh, post that's like more viral or effective? Um, for... For insurance, uh, it's it's quite of uh, like a quite a, a kind of safe kind of thing. We're not like a fast moving. There's something that we can leverage on and virality. It's also because it's a kind of a, a, a protection and a kind of like a compliance thing. So there's not much of virality in, in the sense. Like. So, but one thing was that we launched a, like a travel insurance before we'll last time. Create content. Oops, sorry. I think, uh, Sunny, I think you just came back. So yeah. you were gone for a little while. We were talking about some possible posts that uh, it's, it's more yeah. viral. So so uh, Valerie was sharing that for insurance, it's slightly a little bit more safer, conservative. You do not want to overpromise or do not want to create a lot of, uh, I mean, you, you, you're actually representing your, your whole entire company, correct? And many yeah. agents. So, so I, I guess you have to be even more creative amongst all the, I, I would say, constraints. You have to come up with something interesting. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Actually, I saw a lot of uh, very interesting uh, insurance companies uh, uh, videos. Eh? So, <laughs> about, about the future, the past. I thought it was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah some, some are very interesting. They, they, they show like those um, leverage on like uh, emotions. A lot right. of things are leverage in terms of emotions. Right, right. So, so uh, yeah, Sandy, what, what about you? Have, do you, uh, you? You're actually talking about principles of virality. Must, must the thumbnail or things be clickbaity? Like, put, uh, 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 like, a, like, like maybe, maybe probably that's why they invite you to for this this panel discussion are like, you all look good, then clickbait, then come in. But what, what are your opinions on these uh, clickbait ideas and stuff like that? Uh, Shanghi, like? Uh, clickbait is, I, I guess, also a controversial term, but so long as you don't um, make the viewer feel that they were cheated or the mm -hmm. title doesn't actually um, have anything to do with your content, then it would actually incite a negative response. But if your copy or the first three seconds was really eye-catching or recognizable, so maybe if it's a, it was a collaboration or ad campaign, you put a recognizable face. Like maybe uh, recently, I think Pepsi is doing collaboration with uh, this Korean K-pop group called Blackpink, mm -hmm. who are really popular. So I think in all of their visuals, they would definitely want to put Blackpink front and center because they know that the fans will definitely stay on that piece of content. Stay with uh, for three seconds or more. Yeah. yeah so I think true. just making sure that you know what your audience likes in terms of visuals and then putting that in the first three seconds, uh, making sure it's moving in, and make sure that the video when it plays, um, you also try to get the most important uh, message out as quickly as possible because if you leave it to the very end you might actually lose out i see so like um, blackpink uh, with pepsi well this is celebrity endorsement correct so uh, if you yeah. don't look like blackpink then no no much hope lah. okay I, i'm just kidding but but the whole idea is really being creative uh tapping on trends we were talking about trends so for example uh what are some of the latest trends or like uh currently right now what, do, what, what kind of trends do you see like hot trending topics um the funny, okay, in 2020 at least, a lot of recipes were trending, like hashtag easy recipes, or in the past few months, um, past few weeks, you, we also have the this or that on TikTok, where you choose the two options, and then people will walk towards uh, the option that they prefer. So that was a trend that was ongoing, which I think brands could definitely leverage on. Like in the local context, you could put nasi lemak or chicken rice, which do you prefer? 
and then you could just I, I'm not sure if the audience is is aware of this trend could could you share if you're aware yeah, or saw any uh, content? okay yeah uh, yeah so so I, 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 guess, I guess it's a very uh I would say interesting way you can look at different kind of uh, platforms and find ideas from there as well okay let me just search for one tiktok this or that kind of uh, trending post give me a moment i think besides food also uh, exercising was also a very trendy thing last year right because everybody was at home uh, exercising <laughs> people is either eating or not very healthy <laughs> so so it's something like yeah. that right? uh Sanji? yes right. yeah. single taken single taken they will point to this I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good idea where we actually go to different platforms and find different ideas. <laughs> drink with my friends, drink at a funeral. Okay, this, this is quite funny. So they will dance to a certain uh, location. Well, uh, it, well, it, it's pretty eye-catching, right? Like the first first two seconds, I really want to find out uh, what was the ultimate like choice they make. So very good idea. And and uh, Valerie, you were mentioning exercising, right? In fact, I got one exercise video that went viral. So I don't know whether you know about that. So this, this Oh, yours, uh, yeah, the one about 16 million overviews. It, it went viral, wow. went into different kind of, uh, I would say, I would say media. And of course you say you celebrity. La. So we also like collaborate with Jack Neil, Michelle Chong. So using, and by the way, I, I think, uh, let's talk about that as well. So using of, let's say influencers, uh, using celebrities. Nowadays, do you think that it is still effective and, and how will you actually deploy using celebrities or influencers? Oh, and, and I see there's some, there's some question here. So while, while you, we talk about influencer celebrities, a question by Andrew is, how do you make sure that the contents, the designs created, does not have issues with copyrights and intellectual property? Very, very, very good, very good question. Uh, so I'll come to that. Once we talk about the influencers and celebrities, do you all see a certain like improvement in trend or effective use of, of uh, influencers and celebrities? Uh, Valerie? Oh, uh, for me, yeah, we, but for insurance, we actually use some celebrities to help us to promote the time of travel insurance. So they were promoting in terms of Instagram and that helped uh, because the celebrity was traveling and then uh, said on oh, the protection. And the best was that celebrity did use the travel insurance to protect herself because she, she lost her luggage. And then after that, uh, she also said, oh, I claim it and claim it well. So that helps in the sense, like... Uh, oh, uh, it's not stage, yeah. you're never going no, to it's stage. it's not stage, it was going to yeah. So, mm. so these things happen and this, yeah, this kind of um, real authentic situations also help. Like, that, that, but, so you have to get the, the right celebrity and influencer and work closely with them. Like, so that it's authentic, it's not just showing a product and say, oh, um, this helps me and uh, help you going somewhere, have a protection or things like that. So... Yep. So that's that's very important. Uh. I think it's a building a relationship with that influencer and, and, and seeing a synergy of that influencer with your brand, your product. It's important. And Sanji, do, do, do you see that it's effective? Have you tested it? Yeah. Um, like nowadays, trust is very important between the brand and the consumer. So um, like what Valerie mentioned, making sure that whoever the KOLs, influencers or celebrities that you engage with, to become your brand ambassador has to um, share a, a synergistic target audience and also be able to represent your brand. So previously what would really happen is brands would just go for the biggest names or they would go for the as many as they could and just spread the message out there. But um, that really doesn't give the consumer trust in your product if it's too you know, commercialized. So I think for 2021, what brands can focus on or what they're already doing is finding a smaller group. It could be micro-influencers, it could be the, your bigger names, so long as there's a good synergy with your brand and keep them for a long period of time because the value of the brand partnership grows the longer the influencer stays with your brand because your consumers, the followers, they're not following just for one or two months. They're following for years. So as they see that this brand, hey, um, this, this person that I follow is consistently using this brand for a period of years, that helps to build the trust that it's a legitimate um, good product or service that they can eventually have an interest in. So it's a, a long, long game, which I think uh, brands need to understand that it's not just a one campaign and then you're going to get all the conversions from that. Definitely you can get some, but for a long-term strategy, five to 10 years, you need a slightly longer view of how working with partners, KOLs, can benefit your brand. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And, and one thing that I hear from both 
the panelists is really about authenticity, being real, being uh, really like relatable to your customers. So, so thank, thanks for that. And I, I guess this is probably the, the, the key trend forward and nothing has really changed significantly like what Val Valerie mentioned, right? So, okay, I've been uh, prompted that the time, time is up and th there's one more question about like copyrights and all that. I've put some links onto the chat talking about Pixabay, Pixels, and even a uh, YouTube audio library. Probably these are the place you can get items that people allow you to use and, and make sure you, you do that correctly. Um, right. Hey, can so, I do a quick one on that, that yes. question? I shared like few years ago um, when I was doing for insurance, uh, we were leveraging on the Star Wars because Star Wars actually launched I think three or four years ago. Right. We, we do the campaign at the end of the year and leveraging on Star Wars and 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 do the, the design and all that that give people impression it's about Star Wars and all that by using yes. our products and all, all that. But we also tweak the, the the design and so on that we don't go into uh, IP rights and all that, but we're able to do it. So it's uh, some the 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 the, the awakening sale. We we're saying something about that because it was the, the um Star Wars awaken or, or that was that uh, uh, team that was happening. So we can do that. It's just how creative you can to get by and that, and you have to work together with your creative designer and all that. Come up with a team and so design, and also people can can uh, understand that's a team during that period. So I see. Can I see. do it. Uh. Yeah. Supposed to be creative, uh, right? I, 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 I heard one quote saying, right, if you go and directly copy from one particular idea, it's called plagiarism, uh, or copy. Yes. But if you, let's say, take reference from 10, 10 of them, right, it's called research. Uh. So, so we be creative, <laughs> uh, combine together, and then see how it can go. Well, yes. uh, th thanks a lot, Valerie and, and Sunny. I've, I've learned so much. Uh, and I do hope that you guys have learned a lot. If you did, please also tell me thank them. I'll hand this time back to Laureen. Thank you, Laureen. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. All right. I'm sure you guys enjoyed their presentation, their panel discussion. Let's give them a virtual round of applause in the chat box right now. Uh, Sean, Valerie, and uh, Sangi, thank you so much for being you know, part of Digital Day. I thought this uh, panel discussion was absolutely phenomenal. It was such a cool thing to just listen to your sit back and listen because I think you guys covered so many different parts you know, of uh, social media marketing, you know, emerging digital with, with uh, you know, online and all that, which a lot of people just tend to bypass because they don't, you know, stop to uh, take a little moment and think about it. So thank you so much for doing that for us. Well, all right, you guys, I'll see you all um, hopefully soon. Stay safe and bye. Do stay on for the last um, panel discussion if you like. Uh, Sean, thank you so much once again. Thanks, Valerie. Bye, thank Sunny. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Exabytes. Grow your business online.